Good morning, students, um, and welcome to, um, I guess, the the intro class to chamber music, a study for brass instruments, um, using the Maggio's original brass system. My name is Sergeant Michael Barrage, uh, Mr. Barrage, and um, we're going to develop, uh, you're going to develop your own system and own method of teaching uh, brass in an intimate setting um, using um, different approaches. And one of the main approaches to uh, this development is the Maggio, Louis Maggio system for brass and also the uh, tradition of excellence by Bruce Pearson and Ryan Nolan approach to teaching brass instruments in chamber music. Um, today's course our demonstration course will cover uh, the playing position, the armature, or the formation of the lips, which all lips are, you know, different sizes and shapes. Um, the position of the mouthpiece, um, how to take a breath. You know, people get the concept of breath control and wind control different because trumpets, trumpets and French horns, Flugel horns, trombones um, are all uh, brass instruments and require some type of buzzing vibration within that mouthpiece. And that mouthpiece has to vibrate. The airstream has to flow within that mouthpiece at a certain rate in order to get the, the necessary uh, buzzing required um, for the results that you are trying to accomplish. Um, how to relax, warm up, um, Use pedal tones um, and start from the lower register using the mouthpiece, going to the extreme registers, which most people have a lot of um, complications with, especially in brass playing. Um, there's no shift of octave key with the trumpet. There's no octave key, you know, as if it was playing the saxophone or the clarinet. You know, there's no octave key, so. All of that is done with the shift in wind speed with the armature. Now, let's talk about the plan position. All right, so with the plan position, um, from the read of uh, of the Maggio's uh, method, we want to establish, we want to establish good, solid posture. I'm not saying that you should sit straight up and be stiff because the lower diaphragm would be stiff as well, which connects to your back. You don't want to do that. You want to be as relaxed as possible. You want to be as relaxed as possible. Now, um, as you are relaxed, your feet should be parallel to each other, giving you a solid base, giving you a solid base. Now, from there, you want to breathe regularly, regularly. Um, so it's just like you're breathing normal, taking a deep breath, release. Deep breath, release. Deep breath, release. Deep breath, release. Playing an instrument should be as natural, or taking a breath should be as natural as as breathing or having this conversation. Um, none, none of us should be forced, especially when you're teaching beginners, intermediate, and semi professionals. Um, you want to make sure that you're taking enough breath, enough wind. We're all breathing in air, but you want to turn that air into wind. And once we do that, Naturally, you control it with our diaphragm. Now, let's talk about the formation of the armature, the lip formation. Let's get a little bit closer. All right. Now, 
everybody's armature is different and this the, the way that the lips are formatted however one thing that's applicable to everything that whether it's trumpet trombone french horn euphonium or any brass instrument there has to be an opening here So the opening is called the aperture. The aperture determines how much air and where to set the mouthpiece, how much air gets through that the hole in order to produce the sound that you're, you're, you're striving for. As it pertains to brass ensemble playing or chamber music playing, this could either quaver sounds, it could also, um, shift sounds into becoming more sharp, sharp or flat um but the also it also starts here it starts here now some people from the armature here it's two-thirds top three-fourths bottom This is the standard, should be the standard trumpet, trombone, French horn, uh, armature. And you keep that here. Take an air in the corners. Notice I didn't, I didn't sip the air. Now with the production of sound on um, page, um, it's page eight, page eight of the Maggio's Technique and page four of the uh, Tradition of Excellence with Bruce Pearson. Um, to develop a good sound, you wanna keep that air steady. I always instruct a student, um, whether it's beginner or, or intermediate, or even advanced, to put your hand in front of you. From your armature, as if you're saying, hmm, smile. Here, tuck in the air with the corners of your mouth, and use your tongue, using the word to or do, to push the necessary air stream through the aperture, through that aperture. You should hear the air stream. And if you have your hand out in front of you, you should feel the air stream. Now, if you have difficulty uh, doing that, we have to readjust the armature so that the airstream could be direct into where you're going. Um, so, right here I have trumpet mouthpiece, another trumpet mouthpiece, and a flugelhorn mouthpiece. Now, um, with um, the trumpet mouthpiece, you have a diameter using uh, and size each and there's a hole as you can see a hole in each one of these mouthpieces that that air should go nearly as far as inside of it some people's armature or most people armatures um, hit certain points inside of the rim but you want to try to aim as clearly as possible to the middle part of the hole this is actually the instrument, the mouthpiece. Now, um, depending on the size, when you have the, the, the actual numbers outside of the mouthpiece, so this is a, um, it says a Japan 14A4A, which is equivalent to a Shilky 14A4A. However, the diameter of the mouthpiece size 
is different. It's more filling, more filling versus uh, narrow. Here we have uh, the Vincent Bach 7C, which is the standard mouthpiece that they will usually give a beginning band student um, in band. And here we have the 3C, Vincent Bach 3C, which is a all round mouthpiece for classical playing, jazz, and other genres of music. Um, but that's contingent on the student and the genre of music and the artistry performance level that they're trying to achieve. All right, so with sound production and buzzing, sound production and buzzing. So you wanna relax. If I take my mouthpiece, which is the beginning of the start of sound production. If I'm an amateur, mouthpiece, Place the mouthpiece on the armature. Place the mouthpiece on the armature. Do not put your lips inside the mouthpiece. There you go. Taking a copious amount of air or a lot of air, but we're breathing it. And you have to use the word to, 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 or do to, to change the air speed to wind speed. These are wind band instruments. So, I'm with your form. My face. Notice if the sound is low as a lower air speed. Still a solid buzz, but a lower air speed. Now, we want to strive from beginners to intermediate to advanced to be able to go from to shift from the lower lower air speed to a higher air speed from a I mean wind speed to a a higher wind speed to a lower wind speed. Now with with Majo's um, method and the uh, tradition of excellence method, um, there are different exercises when achieving these. Um, on page, it's the special instructions are given to um, the ta, te, ti, tich syllables. So you have to we have to study those syllables in order to raise the, the palate of our tongue, to raise the palate of our tongue, in order to in order for the wind to shift. Now, if you have it here, if I say ta, that's going to give me a more open sound. A more open sound. If I say te, te, my, of course, saying a, my, the palate was going to raise. It's going to raise. <coughs> the the palate's going to raise. As well as e, e, the palate will raise as well. <coughs> e, the palate raises. And itch, it shifts upward. It shifts upward. But with itch, you have to have a, a, a surplus amount of air to, to produce that wind once you say itch. Because itch, the, the itch syllable um, tampers um, the sound. So you have to keep the aperture hole open in order for that wind speed to, to continue. And that was with the... Um, the uh, 14A4 a mile piece. Also, so let's get into the mechanics of of brass playing. Um, with uh, each brass instrument, there is a naturalness. You have you will have a bell, which causes more so of the resonance. Also, the the material, if it's brass, brass or um, a, a plated, silver plated, I'll give you more residence. Um, so in the beginning of this course, I want you to understand and develop a method that works for you using the, the Maggio's technique where you develop a system 
basic that could be used for beginners, intermediate, and advanced brass musicians to develop a, 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 a characteristic sound that could be used in chamber music. I hope you enjoyed today's lesson. I look forward to uh, progressing with you in this class.